that pastor is on his way. And I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed tonight. You're going to be blessed. Don't you pay my little conversation. No attention. Ain't got nothing to do. I'm, ain't got nothing to do with what God is going to do on this here, what they call it, uh, 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 oh, a podcast. On this podcast, ain't got nothing to do with what God gets me to do. I want y'all to receive my pastor and chief apostle, Kenton L. Smith. Well, bless the Lord tonight, everybody. Hey, man, it's a great night. In Jesus' name, we're so glad to be a part Amen. of this March the 2nd. 21 on this Tuesday night, amen, our first podcast of March. And I want you to know that it's been ringing in the air. Miracle in March. Oh, my God. I got excited when I said it. I believe I'll say it again. Miracle is more. Hey, now you all fast to that. There's some other goodies that's going to come your way tonight. Hey, man, but let us check our line tonight. See who is with us to have this discussion. Hey, man, let's see if we can go out Midwest stopping. St. Louis, Missouri, and see if the Dr. Kim Haven Robinson, a.k.a. Jimmy Kim, you with us tonight. I am with you on tonight. How you doing, Apostle Smith? All is well. What about you? This is a, a great day, and uh, I'm just going to continue on being grateful and praise his holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Let me come back this way a little bit. Let me stop in Indianapolis, Indiana, and let me see is the elder Evangelist Allison on the line. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad to be a part on tonight. Looking forward to the discussion. The Lord bless you. Hey, man, I'm going to take a ride down to the Southland. I'm going to stop and get me a bucket of peaches. Hey, man, and stop by to see one. Apostle Urban Whitlow down in the Augusta, Georgia. All right, but are you with us tonight, man of God? This little light of night, and the only exchange, your little light of night. Oh, now, Heavenly Father, we come, oh, Lord, as an empty picture before ever one fountain town. Oh, I'm sorry. I will practice in my Baptist prayers and songs. Hallelujah. Praise God. So glad to be here tonight on The Voice. Hallelujah. People of God, I want you to know that's what happens when you ask God for communion and not to be part of it. Hey, man, let me take a ride and come back north and let me stop in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and let me check on the riches. Hey, man, Bishop Desmond, Richard, you with us tonight? All right, and there is silence coming from Upper Marlboro. Hey, man, he must haven't had a chance to get on yet. Hey, man, I know he's on the road, but he'll probably be in a little while. 
Well, the Lord bless all of you tonight. So grateful, so grateful, you, my brothers and sisters, to be on this podcast with you again. Amen, but again. But we have progressed to another month of the year. And that's letting me know we don't have time to be lollygagging. We don't have time, eight man, to be playing around and chugging and jiving because time is swiftly moving. So whatever it is we're going to do for the Lord, I'm advising you tonight, get up, get moving, get busy. In Jesus' name, eight man, tonight, we're going to ask, hey, man, Kimmy Kim, lead us in prayer, please. Absolutely. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father God, thank you once again for another good day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Father God. We thank you for the word that gives us the strength to know that everything will be all right. We thank you for the word. It is it reproves us, it corrects us, it gives us the, uh, the standard of living. The word is in us. And we thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ so, uh, who died for our sins so that we can have a relationship with you, Father God. We thank you so much. We are so grateful on this first um, episode in March. Um, we want to see so many wonderful growth as we continue our planting. So we're going to read what we sow in you, Father God. You say that what we do in you is all good and it lasts. So, Father God, as we continue on this wonderful podcast, let it be uplifting to those who are hurting. Let it be to those who have a broken heart or in a bereavement era. Let them know that no matter what is going on, there is joy in the morning. So, Father God, we thank you for Apostle Smith and his vision. Uh, continue on blessing him and his ministry. Uplift him, Father. As best as you know how, because we know you do all things well, and you do them well. And we make this wonderful prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Apostle uh, Whitlow, if you will, give us an overview from last week. Yes, sir. On last week, we were still talking about uh, the prophet, but we had chimed in to a disobedient prophet and how a disobedient prophet affects everything and everyone else. Uh, we talked about the man, the prophet Jonah, who disobeyed God because of his prejudice. Uh, he didn't want to deal with with the people of God because he had his own agenda concerning them. And so we were talking about how you're going to be in this prophetic ministry. You cannot have your own agenda because what you do not like about people. You have to obey God regardless of what it looked like because God wants them saved. You should desire them to be saved too. God wants them delivered. You should want them to be delivered. You shouldn't be so selfish as to ignore what God wants. And it got to a point that it was so bad that it started causing storms in other people's lives. Disobedience of the prophet was causing storms in other people's lives, and that is something that God does not want for his people. So it's important that if you're going to operate in the prophetic office, the office of the prophet, that you walk in obedience to the Lord and that you don't have anything in your heart towards others just because you may not like them uh, because they may not operate the way that you think or you may not think that they deserve uh, the goodness of the Lord. It's not your call. It's the Lord's call. And I'm going to hold right there, man of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I did forget. Let me check in Upper Connecticut. Amen. Is evangelist Josephine Miller with us tonight. All right. I guess if she has not called in, or she will not be calling in, 
All right, so let us get into our study tonight. We were in the first chapter of Jonah, which we shall not read, but I want you to understand we were at the point of Jonah about to be thrown overboard. I want to recap something. Here's the prophet that God called. So, so prejudiced. Until he says, not only am I not going to prophesy to these people, I'm going the opposite way that God spoke to me. Bible said he went to Joppa. At Joppa, he buys a ticket to go to Tarshish. Now, being the prophet of God, he should have known better than anybody where in the world are you going away from the presence of God. Is not possible. And as the prophet, he knew this already. So therefore, I need to let somebody know the turning the opposite way, going to Jaffa, buying a ticket for Joshua, was a total flesh move. It was not like the Lord spoke to him, and he realized, oh, my Lord, tonight I'm supposed to be in Joppa preaching at a meeting. Then I got to come back to our ship because I'm supposed to do a one-day seminar over there tomorrow. No, this man of God has become so callous to the things of God, he literally believed in himself that he could buy a ticket and get away from God and what he told him to do. Now, above that, as it was said in the overview, a storm comes up. I want y'all to look look at this now. We talked about it last week, but I thought it worth mentioning again this week. He went from trying to run away from God until when the storm comes up, he is now manic depressive. And when they say to him, How in the world are you asleep in this storm? He said, the storm is not for you. It's for me. Just throw me overboard. He was not talking about saving him. He was not talking about things getting better. Because he was in such a state about the things of God, a spirit of suicide came on the prophet. Oh, I know somebody didn't like what I just said, but go back and read the text. It is so true and so real that he was so far out of God until he felt like being dead was better than obeying the will of God. So he says, throw me overboard and your life will be spared. He even admitted, I'm the Lord's man, but I have not done what he said. Throw me overboard. He even got to the place. These guys, the 
they got to the place that they, they, they were transported of good. They had done started throwing stuff off the boat, throwing away money, throw, throwing away things that would bring them gain, only to find out they got a disobedient, hard-head, stiff-necked preacher on the boat that ain't got no business being up there. And he's suicidal. Oh, my. How bad can it get when we are out the will of God? Now, and I'm getting ready to bring some of our guests in with us tonight, some of our panel. I want you to understand. It said when they did listen at them, threw Jonah overboard. It said that God has prepared a great fish. Didn't say big. Didn't say that it was an oversight. It said God has prepared. Let me stop right there. Somebody, please give me a definition of prepared. Prepared means to take foresight or to do beforehand. Wait, 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 wait now, wait now. You said foresight, which means mm-hmm. I can see that this needs to be done before it needs to be done. Right. And then it also said what? To do beforehand. To do beforehand. So the Bible actually should read before he was even asking to be thrown. The fish was already in place. Oh, God, have mercy. I got to leave y'all alone. Hallelujah. He, the Bible was telling us that God had already put the fish in the water. He knew that Jonah was going to act suicidal and wanted to be thrown overboard, so he had a fish ready. And notice what I said. The Bible said hey, he had prepared a great what? F-I-S-H. Now, somebody over in the New Testament, in interpretation, decided to put the word W-H-A-L-E in the scriptures. It is not true. A fish and a whale are two different species of water creatures. Uh Uh-oh. Don't start me tonight now. It's two different creatures. A man of fish is that of scales, and a whale is a mammoth or a mammal, which means he has no scales, even though he is a water creature. He is of the family of the seal and all those kind of creatures, a man, but he, a whale is not categorized as a fish. So I want to introduce something to you tonight, and then we're going to talk a little bit. I believe. that was prepared for Jonah is now what we know as the megathon. I don't know how many of y'all ever heard that word before, but it is a fish. And this fish is some 
20 to 25 feet bigger than a great white whale. His belly is so big until they said a megaphone could open his mouth and swallow a great white and still have room. He prepared a fish. You don't read in water creatures nowhere else where that is a fish or a mammal big enough to swallow a man whole. He would have to have been, watch it now, if it was a whale, he would have had to have been eaten and swallowed because the belly of a whale does not carry that kind of capacity. Go back and do your studies. You'll find out a whale don't have that kind of capacity. It would have had to have uh, bit or chewed Joshua and then digested. This megaphone was big enough that when Jonah was thrown overboard, watch this now, I'm talking Bible, it said it swallowed him how? W-H-O-L-E. It swallowed him whole. And he was in the belly of the fish. Somebody talk to me on that little bit right there. Hello. Well, Apostle, uh, uh, when I think about it, I, I think that it shows God has a way of doing what he wants to do when he wants something done. That's the first thing. Second thing is God has a way, if you will, of canceling uh, physics because physics would say that any kind of mammal cannot swallow an individual. But God can make things happen that seem impossible. And people need to recognize that about God and stop limiting him to think that he cannot. No, God can do what he wants to do because he's God. And not just because he's God, but because he's that good of being God. So if that's what he wants done, then people need to see it and respect it and honor it and not try to get in the way of what he's doing at the end of the day. I want to hold out right there, just in case somebody else wants to say something. Is there anybody else? Because I got a question. Uh-oh, they're getting quiet. Yeah, they're real quiet. Y'all get off them pillows. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want you to understand. <laughs> I need to ask this question. So after what I said and what you just said, are you saying that God prepared a well? God does what he wants to do because he's God. Okay. I, I need... I need y'all to go on your, I didn't make up this fish. I need y'all to go on your computers tonight. Look up Megaphone. It is megaphone? <laughs> megaphone. It is the biggest fish ever that swims in water. And they just found the remains of this fish. Even with last year, or the year before last, they just found the remains of this, the, the fossil of this fish about either last year or, 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 in eight, or in 19. And they even said this had to be the fish that was prepared that swallowed Jonah because it's the only fish big enough that to 
could have done something like that. Mm -hmm. And a whale is not a fish. You can study that out at another time. But a whale is not a fish. Oh. But we, uh, uh, we, we that that that's a, a scientific piece that that's in there tonight, hey, fast. But I want you to understand what it said. God prepared a fish. There was a water creature that God had waiting on the side of that boat. We don't know if it swim that fast. We don't know if God made it just before they threw Jonah over. But one thing we do know, Jonah was what? Thrown over the side of the ship. Point two, we know he was swallowed whole. Point three, Jonah testified that I'm in this fish, but it's like hell. Somebody talk to me. Talk to me before I start calling your names now. And I didn't say out of your name, but before I start calling your name by name, come on, talk to us tonight. Yes, I want to go back to when you started and you were talking about Jonah. Um, and it's something that you said when you were talking. I thought about the scripture in Proverbs 3 and 5 when it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. One thing I thought about, it's a dangerous thing to lean to your own understanding. And Jonah in his mindset, he had his understanding of the people of Assyria, the ones he was going to minister to. You know, he had his own understanding about what kind of people they were, whether or not God should show mercy on them or not. He didn't have a desire in his heart to preach a message of repentance. And so as you started, you were talking about the prejudice uh, prophet. And it's a dangerous thing to be a prophet of God or to be a child of God and not have the heart of God. And God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. He said, I have mercy on whom I have mercy. He, he shows mercy on whom he has mercy. Who are we to decide on who God will show mercy on? And so I, you were talking, I was thinking about that. And, and so many times, not only this prophet, but how many times, and I may be a little off track, but how many times do we as the people of God have prejudice against other people, whether not just the race issue, but just prejudice because of our own understanding of our our desires in our heart about a situation or about a person or about what someone did, about what someone said, about how you think this person should be judged. We don't have the heart of God concerning the things of God. Therefore, we lean to our own understanding that and that that leads you to a path. Um, uh, that's away from God. So Jonah not only was disobedient, but he was running away from God. But even in this well thing, whether it was a well or whether it was a fish or whatever it was, we know that God is a God of the supernatural. God can do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it because he's God. Uh, but in that fact that that fish was prepared or that mammal was prepared and Jonah was swallowed up in that in in that fish, and I'm going to call it fish just for the sake of, of the word. He was swallowed up, showed that God even had mercy on Jonah. And, and and even in his disobedience, at any given time, whatever his state was, it could have been his end. He could have he could have jumped when he went overboard. It, that could have been his end because, you know, he was he was in sin. He was in disobedience. He is missing the mark. That could have been God could have said, hey, I can, I can raise somebody else to go uh, and, and preach in Nineveh. But even in that situation, God prepared a well so that he can so he can deal with Jonah and deal with Jonah's heart, deal with Jonah's understanding, deal with him. 
in a way that he would know that God still was having mercy even on him. So hopefully that revelation of seeing God's mercy on him would help him to be more merciful to the people he was going to minister to. So that was just a thought that I was just thinking about because the whole purpose of what was happening was with God was getting Jonah's attention and God was showing him. But I was just also thinking that it's a dangerous thing to um, be called a prophet of God or a child of God and not have the heart of God because God is love. God is merciful. God is, is long suffering. And even though these people were brutal, the Syrians were brutal uh, people when they took captive, they decapitated you. They did a lot of brutal things with their enemies. And, and he couldn't see God having mercy on this group of people. But then he wasn't God, and God has mercy on whom he has mercy. So, yes, God was even showing mercy to Jonah, even with the fish. That's When I think of the fish, I think of how he was swallowed up. I, I thought about how God showed mercy on Jonah because God didn't have to use Jonah. He could have used someone else because his will will be done. But God had mercy on him to get his attention as well and to uh, cause, cause his will to be done. So that was my thought on that. Now, I got to ask a question on something you said. Are you trying to say to us or convey to us or portray to us there are hard-hearted creatures? Now, I, I said that for who's ever on the line, but in your statement, I thought I need to ask that. Are, are, is she saying that there are hard-hearted preachers who are maybe not running like Jonah, but preaching and really don't care about who they're preaching to? Unfortunately, yes, there are. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are people who are preaching. And they do not have the heart of God, you know, um, for whatever reason. Or maybe they're just not sensitive to the heart of God. Maybe they're not in tune to the heart of God. But I think any time that you allow your, your, you allow your understanding to intervene to to compromise the Word of God, uh, it's it's a dangerous place. It's just as if uh, someone has done you wrong. The Bible says, "Love your enemies." And now that you know, the for an example, you know, uh, you have someone who has done you wrong, and now this person's in the line to get prayed for. Now, you can't pray effectively for this person because in your mind, you're still, you still have him locked there or her locked in a prison. <laughs> so you can't even pray. For, you can't even deliver the word that God would have you to deliver because you're remembering something they said or something they done. And so now you're interfering with the with the will of God. God may want you to deliver a word of mercy, a word of love to this person, and now you're hard-hearted. You walk away and go and sit down. Let somebody else pray for that one because your heart is not in it. Because you can't even bring yourself to do the will of God because your heart now has turned away from being who God would have you to be. And, and that's, a, that's a problem. That That is a serious problem. And um, I just leave it at that. All right. Now, here's situation number two in your statement. I heard it mentioned again about the well. And I just explained how it could not be a well. It had to be. It had to be this fish that was just discovered. Well, I shouldn't say discovered. The fossil of this fish was discovered last year, either 19. And it is, uh, oh, I can't remember the length of it. But the length of this fish I know that much is twice the length of a great white whale. That's how big this particular fish is, and they said they only know of one that was in the water ever. It's a mystery. And 
I do agree, Apostle Whitlow. God can do whatever he want to do. But I believe this time, God created, put together a great fish that like we had never seen before, never experienced, not even in that time. I know we definitely haven't seen any fish that big. So most of us would be scared to eat. Most of us know about bluefish. We know about bass. We know about croakers. We know about uh, uh, the salmon and all this stuff. But you're talking about a you you're talking about a fish that is almost the size of a side of a ship. When you really think about it. You talk about one fish that was as big as the size of a ship. I, I believe that alone, cause y'all. When y- y'all go read it, everybody got quiet on me on that one tonight. Hey, but Dr. Kim, what you got to say? Hey, you heard your voice yet? Kim, you're on mute. I was. Well, basically, um, I just want to say God can do whatever he wants to do at what time, how he does it. He can use anybody. He can use a whale. He can use a fish. He can use a rock. He can even use you. And um, one thing I love about God, he is not a person, a a respected person. And so um, this um, story of Jonah teaches me that when you are disobedient, he will cause things to happen in your life so that you have no choice but to get down on your knees and, and to follow him because after looking like this revealing and go over this year 2020 and now we're 2021, how fast the time is just passing us by, how you know crime is at a rapid the standards of living is like degrading and it's getting worse and worse. I mean, I love everyone, but I mean, just to see how we are welcoming, like how marriages are, you know, now is interesting because it's like a slap in the face to God. I love people and I love everyone, but right is right and wrong, wrong is wrong. But I'm not the type of person to get in your face, but oh, that's wrong. But um, it's just becoming more to be acceptance to see same sex marriages, um, people living together, um, couples having babies before they actually get married. They, they live in first. But I mean, that's the world. But I'm still reminded God is, is still in control. And um, although we may see these things, he said these things were coming and they will happen. And so his prophecy has just been, you know, um, played out right now. And it just shows me how powerful God is when he can write a book that is, has been on the best sell, selling list for years and years and decades and get decades. And we see the perilous times in action. We see uh, the last days in action. And we see how he say that, uh, these things must happen before the um, return of Jesus Christ. So the Jonah story tells us that we must continue on being obedient or we will become a Jonah. Yeah. Apostle Whitlow, I don't know if you heard it, but did you hear that shade that uh, Dr. Kim and Kim threw at me just a minute ago? She said it could be a whale, a fish, a pig, a frog, even you. <laughs> That's what she said. I heard it. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. She said. No, 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 no. I mean you in 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 general, like me, you, and no, 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 no. He already using you both and. Uh, evangelist on Henderson, so I know that. No, 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 no. 
Now, she, now it's no, no, no. Like she want to see. I just had to mess with you, darling. That's all. The Lord bless you. All right, now let's get let's get into this situation. Jonah in this belly. Now in this belly. It had to be stinking. A bunch of old, messed up water that this fish had been carrying from the junk that it had been allowing into its belly. So every time it allowed something in, it brought in water that just sat in that belly for who knows how long. Jonah was in a terrible, terrible situation in this belly. How sad is it, people of God? How sad is it? Maybe none of us have been there. But in your thinking, how sad is it that God would have to allow his prophet to end up in the most smelliest, lowest, nastiest situation that anybody could ever be in? Somebody talk to me. Well, well, let, let me let me let me say this: God didn't allow that. No, 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 no. I read a scripture one time in Revelation where the Lord says, "Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me in my hand." The reward of the Lord is to give you accordingly to what you have done. So it's not the Lord that allowed that, it is Jonah with his choices that put him there. It is so wrong to blame God for the choices of man. Even Adam did something like that. Lord, it's the woman you gave me. The woman said, it was the serpent who beguiled me. Nobody ever want to take responsibility for the choices they make. God gave you a freedom of choice, a freedom of will. So, so, so it ain't God who allowed him to be there. No, because the Bible says, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. If God is as power, as great and as powerful as God is. The Bible said it is God who works in man both to will and to do of his good pleasure. But God does not force man to do anything. God does not force man. God could have called Jonah to obey him, but Jonah wanted to do his own thing. So God says, okay, do what you're going to do. You bad, you bold, because yeah, you're my prophet, right? All right, I got something for you. God gives us all the opportunity to make the choice. And this was the choice that John made, so he had to deal with the consequences. Just like us today, the choices we make, there are consequences, whether they're good consequences or bad consequences. The Lord said, I'm blessing if you obey Curse if you disobey. You can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose to be blessed or you can choose to be cursed. It's always just, it's always up to the individual. It's not what God allowed. It's what a person did that got them where they landed. If, 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 if I'm driving down the street and speed limit is 35 and I'm doing 65, I can't blame the vehicle. I'm the one driving the vehicle. Okay, I didn't talk too much, so. No, go ahead. That's it's always really the choice true. of the individual. That is, that is definitely true. That it was the situation choice of the man of God that even made God prepare a fish. But going into the fish, was of his own doing. 
And that's why God prepared it. He prepared it so Jonah could deal with himself. And preachers have gotten all they talking about how God talked to Jonah in the, in the belly of the fish and all that. You don't read that. You don't read nothing about God coming in that belly. When Jonah got in that belly, that situation alone began to talk to Jonah. I've come to understand that there are situations in God. Don't nobody have to come and prophesy to you. Ain't nobody got to rub two or three buckets of oil on you. You know when you done stepped out of God. You know when you're not carrying out his assignment. We know when the Lord is not pleased with our walk. We know when the Lord is expecting better than what he is seeing or receiving at the time. And in this belly, it became a place of reasoning for Jonah. Place begin to tell Jonah just how jacked up God saw him as. Could you imagine being in that belly with dead fish, seaweed, broken pieces of a ship. I mean, whatever you can imagine that can float or be in water was more than likely in that belly. And Jonah, too. Listen at me carefully. God said, and I'm giving an analogy. You ain't going to find it in the scripture. But God is showing us. You said you want to be low down and dirty and not do my will. He said, okay, I'll show you what low down and dirty is, and make you see how filthy you have become to me. God, by this time, even though he's merciful, even though he's loving, even though he had grace, even though he was trying to return, Jonah to himself and to his place of ministry and get him to carry out the assignment. God was upset with Jonah by this time. He said, Jonah needs an awakening. I don't, I, I don't know any of us on this line in our lifetime that have not run into saints, preachers, singers, musicians, whatever it may be, out of the house of God, that every now and then they need or we need a encounter with God in such a way it will wake us up. That we ain't the bag of hell of Twinkie and all that that we think we are. Sometimes, while we think we're a bag of chips, we just a bag of air. 
Sometimes when we think we're a Pepsi, we just a flat liquid. And the Twinkie is stale. But God will put us in a position, in a way that, amen, I want to match it up with this. God will do with us like he did with Jacob. Let him wrestle with himself. And God put Jonah in this belly to see what he saw about him at that moment and in that situation. And Jonah, instead of preaching in Nineveh, Jonah had to run a revival for one called himself. Ooh, here it goes. How many times are we going to run revival and the one that needs revival? How are you going to revive something and you need life yourself? You do. We need to renew ourselves. We need God to bring things out of us before we go preaching talking about what they need out of them. Jonah is in this valley. And God, I'll say it again, and God is trying to deal with Jonah and get Jonah not to see Nineveh, trying to deal with Jonah to see Jonah at this time. I, I, think, I think it's sad. I think it's sad that even in 2021 that there are still preachers and I'm, I'm very serious about that. There are some that just don't get it. As long as I go in that church and preach and turn the place out, I can leave right out of there and go to the hotel and wait for that young lady I've been winking at all night. I can go to the hotel and wait for that young man to come to my room that I shook his hands and in between our hands was my room number. People of God, that some working and washing that need to happen in the ministry of the preacher. It's not always just the people. We know none of them was messed up. But how could a messed up preacher go preach to a messed up people and get the right result? And I must throw this in there. Sometimes we want to fake it like we all good and like we, we've been in the presence of God. Oh, my God. For months. And no, we preaching by the grace of God. God should come in the pulpit, smack us to the ground, and say, get down the altar yourself. Jonah is in this belly. Smelling stuff. having memory problems coming down. I call them problems because every memory 
he had of doing the will of God didn't match where he was at. So now, not only is he in the belly, but his memory is within him. How many times have we gotten to a place in God where we had to remember when we were the one dancing? We had to remember we were the one that had a serious prayer life. We were, had to remember how we used to fast and all that. I, I want you to understand that this story tonight is very much alive in 2021 with a pandemic, with everything else that's going on. This situation is still alive in the midst of us, even while we're on this line. What did it take, y'all? What did it take for Jonah's deliverance? Somebody please talk to me. I think I think that what it took was Jonah recognizing how far away from the Lord he had gone. Because because you 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 can't help nobody if you don't see where you done messed up at. So I believe that Jonah had to see how far away from God he had gone. He had to see how dark in how dark of a place he was. So that he could humble himself and then cry out to the Lord. The problem is a lot of today, a lot of prophets today they don't think that they're wrong in any capacity because they're operating out of a title and not out of a position. They're operating out of a gift and not out of a character. So therefore, he was at a place where he had to be put uh, in a dark spot where he had to recognize, hey, I got myself into a mess here, and I really need God to help me to get out. And until a prophet or a preacher sees themselves as messed up, they cannot, will not get any help from the Lord. So when you see yourself in that place, common sense then kicks in. I done messed up. I done went too far away from God. I can't see the light. I don't hear the Lord speaking. I'm not getting no fresh revelation. I'm in a place I don't need to be. Let me call on the Lord and say, Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I messed up. Swallow that pride and say, God, if you don't help me, I know I'm through. That's just what I'm going to say. All right. Anyone else? Mm-mm-mm. Well, right. I'm, I'm sitting here, and I'm contemplating what Apostle Whitlow just said. And the honest to God truth, I like what you just said, that if I can just throw some seasoning in it, because I like my greens with a little extra seasoning. Sometimes when you smell yourself, what you're smelling ain't rosy at all, but in your nostrils, because you clogged up and blocked up with all kinds of junk, you really can't tell what the scent is. When you think your poop don't stink, mm-hmm, need I say any more? A lot of prophets today want to, and I hope I didn't say this last week, and if anybody did say it last week, please remind me. When you go to prophesy to somebody and all you can do is give a materialistic word, that should be a clue to the body of Christ at large that that prophet, A, number one, is not walking in the spirit, and number two is trying to wing their way through the service. You ought to get up and just go on home. <coughs> Excuse me, because you're wasting time sitting there. <coughs> That's all I'm going to add. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, ladies, y'all don't have nothing else to say. Y'all been real quiet tonight. No, I totally agree with what has already been said. And, you know, God loves the sinner. He hates his sin. And it's so, like I said, that gets in the callings, I'm saying in my own words, comes without repentance. And it's so important as a child of God, a prophet of God, is always to keep a repentant heart and to keep yourself transparent before the Lord. 
And just because God used you and because you have a calling doesn't mean that you have already arrived. So always staying uh, close to God, to to have the heart of God, to always check in yourself with the word of God, to see that you are being that transparent uh, um, person that God can use at all times. Because God is a God of love. And, and when you see that your love is not shining forth the way God would have you, then it's time to really check, you know. Jonah also is a type and a shadow of, of the of the of Jesus Christ, you know, and, and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, with him going when Jesus died on the cross, was in the grave, took the keys, death to hell, and putting him on worth from the enemy and gave us the victory and redeemed us. His mercy, his love, his grace for us, you know, redeemed us. And so, um, you know, we ought to have that same God God was moved with compassion. We ought to we ought to be compassionate. We ought to have mercy. Nineveh had a problem. He 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 wasn't merciful. He didn't have the heart. He didn't have the desire to want to show mercy to his enemy. And and you know, when you're in ministry, you don't choose who you love. You don't choose who you have mercy. You don't choose who you minister to. You know, and, and having a heart of God, you you just have the heart of God. You have a heart of love. You had a heart of compassion. And 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 uh, and when that when that vein is it, it's clogged up in your in you, then it's hard for you to minister the way God would have you to minister. When when your love vessel is, is locked up and it is it is you know you you allow your own personal biases or prejudices to stop you from fulfilling the will of God. That's a problem right there. Um, and and so um, as, as people of God, we always have to keep ourselves before the Lord. We can't allow our personal biases, our personal opinions, our thoughts, our sin, our weaknesses to separate us from what the will of God is. Uh, no one has arrived. And so we are constantly or should constantly stay in the presence of God, seeking his faith, seeking what his will is, not our will, but his will be done in our lives. And, and I think when we stop doing that, it's so easy. And sometimes it's so easy to say, well, if I was in Jonah's place or if I was in Jacob's place or if I was in this person's place in the past, but we all have places in our life that we can identify with these individuals. And Jonah was, was running from God. Instead of running to God, he was running from God. Instead of being obedient to what God told him to do, he wanted to do what he thought, you know, he should be done. And that wasn't to show mercy, and it definitely wasn't to preach the message of repentance. So that's why I began by saying it's a dangerous thing to lean to your own understanding. As a people of God, it is so important that we obey what God is telling us to do, no matter how we feel about it, no matter what it looks like or what our understanding, if God gives you a command to do, God is looking for us to be obedient. And sin causes storms to come into your life. When you when you walk away from what God is telling you, will, you will run into storms in your life. He ran into a storm on that ship, and then he ended up in the, in the, in the well or in the fish's mouth, you know, in the belly. Um, and God had to deal with him concerning his heart. God had to deal with it, and God allows, he, he allows, and I think I like what uh, Pastor Whitman has said, is that our, 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 our decisions cause us to be, have the consequences that come. It was his running that caused the storm. It was his running that caused him, you know, to be thrown overboard. All of that were decisions that he was making, but even in that, God still had mercy. God was trying to get his attention so that he could fulfill the will, his will. And so God doesn't give up on us either, you know. He didn't give up. He didn't give up on Jonah. He could have, but he also wanted Jonah to. It's something about when Paul, when Paul had mercy, you know, Paul did a whole lot of things. You know, where grace abounds, the Bible says, um, "What said about grace abounds much more." But also, I was trying to say mm-hmm. to you that, you know, he understood grace. He understood mercy. And when you understand God's grace and mercy, it ought to cause you to be merciful. It ought to cause you to, to show more grace and more love to others. And that's the whole ministry of Jesus Christ is love. If you don't have love for God's people, if you don't have a heart for God's people, ministry is not where you want to be. God is concerned about souls. And if you're not concerned about souls, or if you're just concerned about a certain group of people, or a certain clique, or this or that, and it's an schism then you don't have the heart of God because God is love. And he doesn't have biases. He doesn't have shades of love. He has pure love. And it reaches to all people of all nationalities, of all conditions, so that souls will be saved. And, and that ought to be our mission is not to have biases in our heart, our own 
our own biases separate us from God, our own inadequacies and, and things in our own heart is what causes the sin to enter in and cause you to go another direction. So it's so important to keep our heart before God so we can make sure that God is channeling his will and his love through us so that we can be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece in the earth. Amen. And I agree with that statement, amen, and with that uh, um, explanation of how we should be about ministry. But you said something that is key to our question. What really happened to Jonah in that belly? And you said it. He got a repentive heart. Sometimes God got to let us or allow us to go to the bottom and break us down so we can realize again, Lord, I'm so out of order with you until I feel stupid. Lord, I messed up so bad until I need you to deliver me. I mean, seriously, if everyone would really read Jonah's prayer while he was in this belly, it will bring tears to your eyes. Just think about it. A preacher got so low until he prayed to God and said, Lord, I feel like I'm in hell. I done messed up so bad. I'm as low as I can get right now. The only other thing left, Lord, is your total destruction. But right now, I'm already in a place that is dealing with me in such a way until I wish my heart was right and I had done what you said. Lord, I repent. I'm going to tell you something. That we are, we are so stubborn sometimes until we don't realize until that is what God is looking for He's looking for a repentant heart, but our arrogance won't let us do it. <laughs> and God knows there ain't nothing worse. And I'm going to say it. I hope everybody that's online still on here. There ain't nothing worse than an arrogant preacher. Yes, yeah, damn right. You talking about smelling something and think it don't stink. Ain't nothing worse than a preacher that can't see their own pride of self. They say the best preacher, they say the best dresser, they say the best at everything that's going to happen. Watch this centered around themselves. Arrogant brought Jonah to a low place. So low that he said, if I don't pray and get myself right, I ain't going to be around much longer. Mm -hmm. How long? Much longer. Jonah floating around that water with everything 
that he was smelling, bumping into, and all this. And you know, being down there like he was, his stomach had to turned over to a creature. So I want you to understand, this story of Jonah is not just good preaching. It's really something to look at and say, Lord, help me to stay in a place with you where I'm always doing your will without reservation or without all that they do your will, I need to take care of me. We should always keep ourselves in a place where we're willing to be repentant, willing to always check with God, to make sure we're walking in his way, ready to be used by him. But here tonight, here is Jonah in this belly, crying out for his disobedience, Crying out for his arrogance, crying out because he's tired of being tired of who he is and where he is. And if we admit the truth, either we've been there or we know some that have been there. And it ain't pretty. It's not funny. I have seen preachers in my life and time who have done things in the presence of God and God had to get on them. I've seen preachers go down sick, walking a healthy, strong, amen, ready to go forth, but because there was something they had done in the presence of God that they would not repent for, seeing God take them down almost to death. And then they repented. And when God got through raising them up, it was almost as though they were never sick. This is why I tell people, in getting saved or in repentance, period. Don't claim you're repentant and you get ready to go right back to it. Repentance is not a game. When you repent, you're saying, Lord, I'm not going to return to this ever again. And so tonight, On this point, we're going to end. I want you to understand, Jonah, this prejudiced preacher, instead of preaching to a city, he winds up holding a revival for one in a nasty place. But he preached and prayed for himself until a revival broke out in him. And when the revival broke out in him, oh, well, I got to go now. But next week, we're going to talk about the prejudice preacher, and we're going to pick it up, talking about how repentance makes sin sick. The Lord bless you tonight. I've enjoyed myself. I don't know about you, because this book of Jonah really is so deep, and for years, Amen, most preachers. Amen, poor Jonah. For most preachers, they never they never even got him out the well. 
or uh, the, the fish, can't find some, never got them further, can't manifest the fish. But I want you to understand, when we get through with this, we're going to know what to do, how to do, and how to stay in line with God as preachers of the gospel. Amen. Any other statements from anybody before we close out tonight? Man of God, I think it is a great discussion. I think there was very much that was offered, and I pray that people who are listening will take heed. If they find themselves in such a predicament, they need to go ahead and do like Jonah, and they need to repent while they can. In Jesus' name. Great discussion. Thank God for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to just going to say I apologize that I've got here so late. Uh, we're still out here in Syracuse trying to fish out a place that we can rest. It's crazy out here. I'm starting to feel a little Jonah-ish in terms of finding a place to rest. That was what was wrong with Jonah. He could not rest. And imagine this. I like what everybody said. Thank you for what I heard. But think about this for those of you that are listening right now. Preach it from a dead place. Hmm. How's that working out? That's all I want to say. All right, sisters, y'all want to say something? Okay, I guess not. Hey, man, we're going to ask Pastor Whitlow give us our closing prayer, and then I'll come back and give the vital say. Father, once again, we want to say thank you for this time you've allowed us to share in your word, to hear what you are saying to these, to the prophets and the preachers of today. I pray that these words would, oh God, penetrate their heart, their mind, their spirit, permeate them unto, Lord, it changes them, and they become who you're calling them to become. We pray that you keep us all, bring us together again at the appointed time, that we may talk more about you, hear more of you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And as I often say to us all, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going to hell, don't stop. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God has great things in store for you. Amen. Sister Kimmy Kim, let the music play.
Yeah. 